Three years, we built the strongest military by far. We're also putting in a massive budget request for our beloved military. I'd earned my spurs on the battlefield, Martin, as you pointed out, and Donald Trump earned his spurs in a letter from a doctor. So. <laughs> on the campaign trail and the way he talks about the U.S. military, the way he talked about U.S. military leaders, he, he portrayed almost a caricature of a military officer. We are going to appoint Mad Dog Mattis as our secretary of defense. I think what he's been surprised by is that the military, uh, they like order, they like discipline, they like to work with allies. I don't love war. What I crave is security for my country and my allies. That likes a leader, that, that they know where the person is coming from, they feel is predictable, uh, and that's not Donald Trump. I guess I'm an unconventional person. On the one hand, uh, we've heard a lot of rhetoric coming from the president regarding North Korea uh, or Iran that sounds very hawkish. If they misbehave, they're on borrowed time. But on the other hand, he's, he's been very consistent in, in talking about the, his desire to pull troops back, bring troops home, to end, end forever wars. And by the way, we're knocking the hell out of ISIS. We'll be coming out of Syria like very soon. The way the Syria decision was made, which apparently came on the fly after a phone call with the Turkish president. I think what we're doing is the right thing. A lot of people agree with me. A lot of people agree with me. The result of which was essentially the betraying uh, close partners of, of the U.S. military over the last several years. We're about to destroy the best ally we've had on the ground in the fight against ISIS. That would be a uh, dishonorable act. It would be a national security disaster. We never agreed to protect the Kurds.